So how does a black hole work? Put yourself in the shoes of Einstein and take general relativity to its natural conclusion about these massive things. It's best to think of a black hole as not an object so much as a region of space-time, okay? It's a region with the property, at least in classical general relativity, quantum mechanics makes everything harder, but let's imagine we're being classical for the moment. It's a region of space-time with the property that if you enter, you can't leave. Literally, the equivalent of escaping a black hole would be moving faster than the speed of light. They are both precisely equally difficult. You would have to move faster than the speed of light to escape from the black hole. So once you're in, that's fine. You know, In principle, uh, you don't even notice when you cross the event horizon, as we call it. The event horizon is that point of no return, where once you're inside, you can't leave. But meanwhile, the space-time is sort of collapsing around you uh, to ultimately a singularity in your future, which means that the gravitational forces are so strong, they tear your body apart um, and you will die in a finite amount of time. The time it takes, if the, if the black hole is about the mass of the sun, to go from the event horizon to the singularity takes about one millionth of a second. <laughs> and w what happens to you if you fall into the black hole? Like, if we think of an object as uh, information, that information gets destroyed. Well, <laughs> you've raised a crucially difficult point. Mm. So that's why I keep needing to distinguish between black holes according to Einstein's theory of general relativity, which is book one of space-time and geometry, which is perfectly classical. And then come the 1970s, we start asking about quantum mechanics and what happens in quantum mechanics. According to classical general relativity, the information that makes up you when you fall into the black hole is lost to the outside world. It's there, it's inside the black hole, but we can't get it anymore. In the 1970s, Stephen Hawking comes along and points out that black holes radiate. They give off photons and other particles to the universe around them, and as they radiate, they lose mass, and eventually they evaporate, they disappear. So once that happens, I can no longer say the information about you or a book that I threw in the black hole or whatever is still there, is hidden behind the black hole because the black hole has gone away. So either that information is destroyed, like you said, or it is somehow transferred to the radiation that is coming out, to the Hawking radiation. The large majority of people who think about this believe that the information is somehow transferred to the radiation and information is conserved. That is the a feature both of general relativity by itself and of quantum mechanics by itself. So when you put them together, that should still be a feature. We don't know that for sure. There are people who have doubted it, including Stephen Hawking for a long time, but that's what most people think. And so what we're trying to do now in uh, a topic which has generated many, many hundreds of papers called the black hole information loss puzzle is figure out how to get the information from you or the book into the radiation that is escaping the black hole. Is there any way to observe Hawking radiation to a degree where you can start getting insight? Or is this all just in the space of theory right now? Right now, we are nowhere close to observing Hawking radiation. Here's the sad fact. The larger the black hole is, the lower its temperature is. So a small black hole, like a microscopically small black hole, might be very visible. It's given off light. But something like the black hole at the center of our galaxy three million times the mass of the sun or something like that, Sagittarius A star, uh, that is so cold and low temperature that its radiation will never be observable. Um, black holes are hard to make. We don't have any nearby. The ones we have out there in the universe are very, very faint. So there's no immediate hope for detecting Hawking radiation. Allegedly, we don't have any nearby. As far as we know, we don't have any nearby. Could tiny ones be hard to detect? Somewhere Absolutely. at the edges of the solar system, maybe? So you don't want them to be too tiny or they're exploding, right? They're, they're very bright and then they would be visible. But there's an absolutely a regime where black holes are large enough not to be visible because the larger ones are fainter, right? Not giving off radiation, but small enough to have not been detected through their gravitational effect, yeah. Psychologically, just emotionally, how do you feel about black holes? Do they scare you? I love them, I love black holes. But the universe weirdly makes it hard to make a black hole. Right, Because you really need to squeeze an enormous amount of matter and energy into a very, very small region of space. So we know how to make 
stellar black holes. A supermassive star can collapse to make a black hole. We know we also have these supermassive black holes at the center of galaxies. We're a little unclear where they came from. I mean, maybe stellar black holes that got together uh, and combined, but that's you know one of the exciting things about new data from the James Webb Space Telescope is that quite large black holes seem to exist relatively early in the history of the universe. So it was already difficult to figure out where they came from. Now it's an even tougher puzzle.